This is the hypothetical podcast where three pathetic guys discuss hypothetical situations. On this episode, Peter asks Justin and I, how would you spend a million dollars in 24 hours to maximize just the hilarity and ridiculousness of it all? Before you get to the episode, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and follow us on all our socials. All right, hello, and welcome to another episode of Hypotheticals, probably the best podcast you're listening to because, uh, you know, we're on it and all the other podcasts suck. So for this week's hypothetical, uh, we're going to get a little bit crazy. But before we reveal that, um, let's introduce our two combatants, I guess you could say. Uh, Justin, hello. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm uh I'm surviving. I'm quarantined, but I'm surviving. How are you? I'm, you know, living the dream. Stuck inside all day. It's uh you kind of lose track of what day of the week it is, but the only benefit is that you can drink at any hour of the day and there's no one to judge you. So, you know, here's to uh Alcoholics Anonymous after this. Yeah, I guess so. At least uh the benefit is all the days end in Y. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, uh enough for my bad jokes. Um Matt, how are you doing? Well, I just feel like calling all the same thing. All the other podcasts suck. That they suck, and that ours is the greatest. I'm. Um, uh, if we can muster our seven subscribers to sort of go ahead and just you know uh, rally around our cause here. I I mean, I, there are a lot of great podcasts out there. I don't think ours is bad, but calling everyone else crappy and that ours is the best. Um, I don't think that we really have the high ground from any type of statistical point of view. Any kind of reach point of view, uh, uh, even the talent point of view could probably use a boost on on all parts. But uh, <laughs> I will. I understand what you're saying here. You gotta. You're back into a corner. You want to start throwing punches. But uh, other podcasts can be good. Ours is uh, could be there too. I think ours is the best. Okay, personal opinion. As you all know, my personal opinion uh, does not hold water. <laughs> so and it seems that the more that we record the more we learn some scary facts about you like last episode just just went off the rails so yeah if you haven't listened to our last episode uh listen to the last episode listen to all the episodes i think that's a fair statement and then subscribe <laughs> exactly so that our seven uh subscribers can not feel so lonely all the time and having to sort of reach or you know when you could fit all of our subscribers in one minivan that's probably an issue but it's okay we will get bigger we will eventually get the grand caravan with the uh stowaway seats so that we can probably fit a, an eighth in there somewhere there's room <laughs> there's definitely room stowaway seats and the second sliding door on the other side that's what you need <laughs> Then you know you made it. If there's a second sliding door, it's because I'm honestly just going to like roundhouse kick you out one of the two sides, each of you. <laughs> uh, you each get a door that you'll be kicked out of as the mo- from the moving vehicle. I'm down. Let's do it. All right. Uh, so let's get into our hypothetical question for this week. Um, so these guys haven't had any prompting as to what um, the topic is this week or what the question is this week. I'm just going to kind of lay it on them. And then, uh, yeah, they're going to kind of duke it out. And I'm going to actually be the judge this week and say, which of you came up with the best uh, possible conclusion to uh, my scenario? I like this one because I like that you're you're the one giving the question this week, Peter, so no one can spoon feed you a win this week. Oh, relax. <laughs> I justified my my answer last week. I justified why I gave him the win. You're just butthurt because you chose Elon Musk. Yeah, because I embarrassed myself. <laughs> I am merely echoing this the sentiments of those who have listened and have reached out to me and asked me how the living hell I lost that previous episode. I do have to say that one of... Um, our subscribers, uh, his name is CJ. He's a good friend of mine down in Florida. He also did our cover art for us. Um, he actually reached out to me after the episode and asked me how the hell I gave the victory to Peter when he thought that Elon Musk was an excellent choice. Well, thank you, CJ. I was getting battered on all sides of the spectrum, but I still defend my answer, and I still think that Peter deserved the win last week. Don't at me. You want to know the worst part about it? My girlfriend even said... You know what? Matt should have won that week. Elon Musk was a great choice. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's just, that's only everybody. I get it though. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. I don't care. I get it though. 
because sometimes the you know the weakest of the litter sometimes needs to get picked up needs to be picked up and breastfed like that's literally what happened with Peter in this case but it's okay Peter I'm just glad that you're healthy and you're on the board now so that you can now sit in the judge's chair and pontificate about how you won and you're on a winning streak and how you're taking a seat back so us peasants can get one for us, you know, and we can maybe come out with a victory because we haven't won a, an episode in weeks, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm very, very interested to see how this goes. Um, all I have to say is I was playing T-ball and you were playing hardball. Is that supposed to be good for you or me? Uh yeah, Justin was the T, just like holding it out there, and I just knocked it out of the park. <laughs> Swinging your bat at me. <laughs> and you were playing hardball against like Randy Johnson. No, you know what? I felt like the bird that Randy Johnson hit in spring training. Just obliterated. <laughs> Feathers everywhere. No idea what the hell happened. Bewildered, dead. Not a clue as to why I just got nailed by that kind of blind side that I did. But okay, I will gladly put that in the past now. I just want to throw it out there. You know, you know what, Peter? I almost feel bad giving you the win now because even though I justified it and I truly believe in my heart that it was the right decision, I feel like you're just being even more obliterated now because you've, they're they're saying that you're spoon fed. And that you didn't deserve it. And so I think that you're going to have to come back next week and try to beat me when Matt is host. Um, because I, I don't know if that victory is going to gonna count for much. Can't wait to give Peter another win next week, too. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Anyways, guys, let's get to our uh, our topic this week. Because we've already wasted, what, six, six minutes plus? We're, we're um, in quarantine, so yeah. man. What else do we have to do? Come on. We'll try to make it five with the edits. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So our topic for this week is drum roll, please. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll, we'll add it in post edit. Don't worry. <laughs> Actually, we might have to pay royalties on a drum roll, so we don't want to do that. Um, I do the editing, and I am definitely not going to be searching up a drum roll. So, <laughs> oh, can you can you get that drum roll from Christmas Vacation when she's drunk on the front lawn? <laughs> oh Lord, there's so much I got to cut out of this already. Holy Moses! Oh my God, you got to keep that in. You got to keep that in. <laughs> so, our topic for this week is: you have 24 hours to spend one million dollars. You cannot put any in the bank. You cannot invest any of it. You can't hit the stock market. Nothing that is going to make you more money. You have to find the most ridiculous ways to spend a million dollars in 24 hours. And I'm going to judge both of your ways. And one of you is going to walk away the victor. But what's the, what do you mean by ridiculous? Because if that's the, 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 if, if it's ridiculous, I would just buy a whole bunch of hats and put them on crabs and then have a parade like that. If that's yeah. ridiculous, but if, like, if that's what you want to do, that's, that's what you could do. If Justin's like, I want to buy a house, like that's boring. I'm not going to choose that because that's stupid. I want something out of the box. I want something crazy. You, you have a million dollars to really do something crazy. Outlandish and weird. Yeah. All right. Who do you want to go first? Um, hmm, let's say we'll give Justin the first one. All right. Matt, a little bit of time, just, you know, he's got to think about last, uh, last episode. <laughs> I have a strategy and I'm ready to go, but Justin, you go first. All right. So I need to spend a million dollars as ridiculously as possible. Yes. In 24 hours. In 24 hours. Okay. Um, so the first thing that I would be doing is, uh, I would be going to the LCBO and I would be stocking up on as much sour beer as I can, because it's already hard enough for me to come by. Um, and whenever I do find it, I try my best to clear out the shelves as I did today at Fortino's. Don't judge me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, now it, it's hard cause you, you know, you I have to spend, a million dollars and yeah you can't you save said, any of it after the 24 hours the million dollars is gone and i can't save any and it can't be boring and it's only a million yeah all right so um let's see here yeah so i'm stocking up on sour beer um i mean i'm trying to think of how much that would cost me uh i would probably buy a a year's worth which would cost me a pretty penny because they're not cheap um so let's say a thousand dollars a thousand dollars out of the million wow uh, okay, here's a little bit of a, a lame fact about me. Uh, my uh, academic background is in ancient history, uh, and I have an obsession. Anybody who's been to my house would know this. It looks like a museum. I have an obsession with Roman coins. This is true. And so I think that I would probably buy all of my, you know, 
I, there's a bunch of coins that I have, and there's also coins that I would love to own, but unfortunately are way out of my price range. Uh, and I'd probably buy a few of those. And when I mean out of my price range, I mean like up to $10,000 for a single coin. Wow. Um, because of how rare it is. So I definitely would spend my money, um, you know, sifting through uh, ancient memorabilia. Uh, I, I, I would buy a chocolate fountain for my house. <laughs> Right in the middle of my foyer, I would just have this massive chocolate fountain All right. fondue. Yeah. So you're leaving in the morning, you're hungry, you know, you grab a banana, you peel that shit, you dip it in the fondue, and you get out to work. And, you know, now you got a chocolate banana. <laughs> you just have this fountain just going 24-7. <laughs> just this massive fountain with chocolate fondue coming out of it. All right. All right. I see you. You, know, you get super drunk one night, you go for a, you go for a swim in it. <laughs> inside the chocolate fountain all right inside the chocolate fountain i get it um you know what i've always wanted to sleep in one of those race car beds because i thought <laughs> that, that was like the epitome of like rich kid you know rich kid life so i feel like when i was a kid all, all those kids who had they were the same kids that had those stupid belts that were seat belts you know what i mean they went mm -hmm. around your waist and it was like a car seat belt but i feel like that was the same kid that had the race car bed uh so i would i would buy a designer um, custom made race car bed for my myself probably in the shape of a Lamborghini nice that's my favorite sports car uh, I don't even know how much money I have left as I'm rambling on here but uh, I'm trying to think of what else I can spend money on to be absolutely ridiculous um, I think that I would probably get a um, a painting of myself custom made Okay, you have 24 um, hours, remember. So he has to like do oh, this on the spot. Oh, it's going to be 24 spot. hours. I can't do that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah. Hmm, 24 hours. Um, so I got the chocolate fountain. Yep, got you got the sour, sour beer, beer, the coins. I got the race car bed. Mm -hmm. I got some ancient coins. I definitely would buy myself a statue. Um, I would go out and buy myself like a massive bust of Julius Caesar or something made of marble. Um and I think, you know what, just to finish it off, because I am absolutely in love with them, I would just buy, I would spend whatever money I had left on um, sour keys and jujubes. jubes. That is <laughs> wow. what I live for. And I would just, I would just have my pantry filled with sour keys and jujubes, jubes. And then I would die from eating that many sour keys and jujubes jubes in the span of 24 hours, because I would probably eat all of them by the time, you know, the 24 hours was up. Um, and that would be the most glorious way for me to go out. All right, so you got the chocolate fountain, sour so beer. So got fondue fountain, sour beer, coins, jube jubes and sour keys, ancient coins, and the most badass Lamborghini race car bed for my adult ass. By the way, I'm 29 years old, so don't judge me. And the statue. Oh, and of course, the bust of Julius Caesar. Yeah, that's that's a list for sure. That's a list. Now, uh, enter Captain Ridiculous. Are we done? Oh, oh, we're done. Yes. Oh, we're done. Okay. Let me let me uh, let me just interject here. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, the whole premise of this is the most ridiculous way to spend a million dollars in 24 hours, right? And based on ridiculousness, it has to be outlandish, crazy, whatever. Jube jubes, the fuck? I have some in my drawer next to me that's not outlandish. A fondue set, literally half the shit, more than half, like the majority of what you said right now can be purchased at Ikea on a weekend, <laughs> no problem. You could go, you could fucking go buy your fondue set, no problem. You can go get your Swedish berries and all that other shit. You can get that, no problem. You could get your race car bed at Ikea. You could also probably find some old fucking change on the ground on your way out. If you're lucky and you pay cash, they might give you a penny from 1916. Now, I get it. It's not a Roman coin, but who the fuck thinks that coins are ridiculous? Okay. I have them all over the goddamn house. Oh, I'm not done. You had your say. It's my turn. I could literally just win this right now by saying I'll do everything that, that Justin does and I'll put a fucking beanie propeller hat on everything that he got and it would just be that much more ridiculous <laughs> and I would win based on the fucking rules. But I'm not going to take that easy way out. I'm not going to take that easy way out. I would say I'll do all of that like beer. Is really beer. Spending a thousand dollars on beer is not ridiculous. If you've ever been to the cottage that I go to with my buddies, <laughs> that is the first trip that we make to the beer store. It's like easily a thousand dollars between like the eight or nine of us. Okay. Oh, I'm not done, motherfucker. I missed the ridiculous mark. Okay. It was off the top of my head. 
All right, you're talking to somebody here who is very categorically... That's <laughs> totally fine. I think categorically, okay, so coming up, stop my head, ridiculousness, <laughs> I think the chocolate fondue fountain was pretty good. Yes, it is just a fondue fountain. You could have it at Karen's house when she has her dinner party on Sunday. No problem. Bring your own kiwis. Okay, but like, I think you're missing the point here. I'm not talking about like a tabletop. I'm talking about like a massive... Like you could swim in. Like a, like a fountain you'd find in somebody's backyard full of fondue like that's going in my foyer of my house all right peter picture that with a beanie propeller on it like a beanie <laughs> propeller hat on it pretty fucking ridiculous all right here's literally you want ridiculous you want out there you want crazy yes sir i'm waiting all right matt spend spend a million dollars spend a million dollars let's go if again understanding the rule set here i'm just playing within the sandbox that you've dumped me in which is 24 hours a million dollars i cannot use that money to invest or create more money so to speak i have to spend it frivolous frivolously to create a ridiculous scenario that peter then has to judge but thing is yeah you can't pay off debt you can't do any of that stuff yes but to peter having like i feel like peter is impressed by like a blue car like oh that's fucking ridiculous that car has this blue, blue like cars exactly that's what i'm saying so, <laughs> but i have a black car uh, well because exactly because a blue car would be too fucking ridiculous for you you would be driving it and is. laughing and showing people your blue car nothing would be done okay so here's the deal <laughs> with a million dollars i if i've learned anything from fucking tiger king is that you can get a tiger for like two grand so here's what i would do yeah it's true he held up two and he was like this is five thousand dollars well that's it so, but even then, I would go and find, I would buy a, basically, I would go and find, I would have built a small scale set of a, of a, 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 an urban city of like Manhattan. And then I would go out wherein I would buy probably about two dozen of those fainting goats. Okay. <laughs> I would get a real life Godzilla style costume. And then I would have a, a, a massive showing in a park somewhere with all kinds of like spotlights and sound effects and fireworks, wherein the each of those goats would be pretty much dressed up as random citizens of that city. <laughs> they would be all walking through the city. And then me in my giant Godzilla costume. Yeah, they got like a suit on. Oh, they, one of them is like a lawyer. <laughs> one of them is like cheating on his wife. Yeah, like he's they they're all fucked up. Like they all have none of them are happy cuz they're living in a city and they have jobs <laughs> and it's stupid and coronavirus hasn't fucked up their lives yet too, but they still have to go to work and like they're in that that zombie zone of just everything sucks. But either way, it doesn't matter to them because it's going through their day-to-day -day drudgery uh and they're all wearing beanie propellers obviously because it has to be <laughs> fucking ridiculous. 3 of them have kazoos for some reason and like taped to their mouths so whenever they they go bah, meh, and like it's all different stupid noises <laughs> but that's how it speaks correct anyways everybody in the audience would have slide whistles okay so there'd be <laughs> slide whistles that everyone in the audience would have i'd come out with my godzilla fucking costume again with a beanie propeller and a uh, and a bow tie because I would have a bow tie because I have to be respectable uh, and I would go crashing through the city and the thing is is that judging by the 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 slide whistle sounds I would then go either left and destroy the city or right so the audience would control my movement with the slide whistle and then <laughs> I would just have a, a giant thing and when all is done fucking fireworks good would come off and little army men with those little plastic parachutes would fall down with notes that would, would have, like, random Roman coins on them because fuck you, Justin, and your Roman coins. <laughs> <laughs> that that was how I would spend my million dollars ridiculously. I wouldn't buy a fucking bed. Like, I have a bed. <laughs> I wouldn't buy a fondue set that's big enough me to dunk my ass in. Like... No, that, I wouldn't. You wouldn't want to go swimming in fondue? No, fuck no. Who wants to go swimming in a giant pile of boiling chocolate? Who the, who wants to do that? <laughs> I want to go destroy a town with a bunch of fainting goats dressed as citizens with uh, my my movement dictated by an audience with slide whistles and beanie propeller hats. Everybody who comes in through the gate of this free event gets a beanie propeller hat. And they all have to wear them. <laughs> That's my, that is my scenario. Well, one night only, obviously, because this, this is a 24 hour scenario. So it's a one night only show. I wonder who you're going to have to call to get that all together. Doesn't matter. I would pull out the rest of the money. That's it's all bribe money. It's all bribe money. No problem. Uh, the rest of it is underneath the chairs of the other people. Correct. Exactly. So at the end of it, you're like, check under your chairs. And then they go and check under and there's like a thousand dollars each. Honestly, 
the most ridiculous way to spend a million dollars would probably be to spend it on you to bribe you to choose me to win this particular episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> but I am going with the Godzilla and the fainting goat scenario. Slide whistles, canoe, kazoos, and all that stuff. Okay. I have one question. How are you going to get two dozen fainting goats in 24 hours? Good question. Uh, you just go to the nearest farm or whatnot. I mean, I would imagine within 24 hours and a million dollars, I will be able to find them. They're not like, it's not an endangered species. It's not uh, <laughs> uh, It's not like I'm, I'm trying to revive the dodo here or, you know, it's not like they're, they're only native to the fucking moon. Like there, there's some <laughs> within a, a six hour drive of wherever the hell I am, guaranteed. If not, I just, I can get in a plane and go or do whatever. It's not that hard. Or I locate where they are and then I bring my whole set and have my set built there. No big deal. Ah, uh, that's what I was thinking, was instead of bringing them to you, you go to them. Yes, regardless. That might be a good idea. I, f- I locate them and then on that particular farm, I bring in all and I build up my set and it, it could just be paintings on a fucking, it doesn't matter because I'm just destroying it. I'm surprised you chose Godzilla and not like King Kong. Well, uh, I like to I like to dress up as things that don't exist versus things that do exist. <laughs> you don't want to be like a giant gorilla. No, King Kong. King Kong exists. He'd be really pissed off to hear that you don't think he exists. Godzilla get, exists? I mean, come on. No. There's so many parts of the ocean that we haven't discovered yet. He's down there somewhere. Yeah, I guess. So was my victory in last episode. I'm just saying that in this particular episode, I don't think there's much ri- there's much ridiculousness involved in buying beer jujubes of chocolate fucking fondue fountain that's bigger than a normal one and a, f- a fucking car bed. Like I okay, I'll, I'll I'll give you credit. My my ideas were not super ridiculous, although I do think that a massive giant fondue fountain in my foyer of my house is ridiculous. I, I think is it more ridiculous than fainting goats dressed as people and a slide wi- <laughs> a slide whistle operated Godzilla? No. Okay, that there you go, Peter. I leave this to you, my friend. I am giving each of you one chance to amend your choices in any way. You have ten seconds to think. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's bullshit, but okay. All right, Justin, go for it. Change your change your answer if you want. You have ten seconds, I guess. All right, I am going to go out and I'm going to buy one of those monkeys that can ride unicycles. And I'm going, actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to buy 10 monkeys that can ride (laughs) unicycles with 10 unicycles. And I'm going to make my own little fucking circus. You want to have a Godzilla show? I will have a circus in my backyard for anybody to come and see, assuming that COVID-19 is over. And it will just be monkeys riding unicycles, wearing tuxedo jackets and fucking bow ties. Boom. There's my million dollars right there. Are they going to be smoking cigars? No, no. You know what? No, they're, no, they're not going to be smoking cigars, but they're all going to have fucking bananas that have been dipped in my goddamn chocolate fondue fountain <laughs> from the foyer of my house. Matt? All right. Um... <laughs> I'll take my original idea and add 10 monkeys on unicycles oh, with bow ties <laughs> and fucking c- and cigars and little guns that when they fire them, it comes out and says, bang. That's what I'm <laughs> With the little flag? Yes. <laughs> the little exactly. Flag. They're, they're going to be around. They're going to be the ushers at this fucking uh, giant Godzilla party that I'm throwing. All right. Um, well, uh, I guess those are pretty frivolous ways of spending a million dollars each. I mean, I feel like both of you still would have had money left over at the end of it. Sorry, uh, let me say, let me, let me, let me double the, these monkeys that I'm hiring as ushers all come from a royal family. That's why they're so expensive. And they're all painted gold. That's why they're so expensive. I have no, I have absolutely no money left. I don't even have money to clean up the shit. I just leave. <laughs> Afterwards, I literally, I just fucking, <laughs> my last six dollars is on like a, an old magician store smoke bomb that I just drop on the ground and, <laughs> and fucking run out the back and catch a, a, a fucking greyhound back home. That's pretty much how that goes. Now, he has a million dollars for 24 hours doesn't even choose like a private jet flight back like catches a greyhound that's ridiculous but isn't that ridiculous wouldn't that be a ridiculous way to end it it is <laughs> exactly all right let's uh get down to judging this and i think we can tell just by the sheer ridiculousness the sheer i don't even know what to call it insanity of the plot and the choices Oh, man, this one hurts. This one hurts. 
I'm going to have to give this to Matt. I know. I know. I, I knew it was coming the second I heard his idea. I, I knew it. I was hoping that my 10 unicycle riding monkeys with bananas dipped in chocolate were going to, you know, in tuxedo jackets was going to sweeten the deal. But no, I I messed up this one. I'll, I'll give that one. That was a good add on afterwards. Should have started with that. Should have started. The fact that, yeah, the fact that Matt just was like, no, I'll just do the same thing. It kind of just negates it. And add beady propeller hats to everything. Literally, I said, when, as soon as he said the most ridiculous thing, like I needed some parameters here because literally I, I could have just honestly bought like 10,000 crabs and had give them all top hats and monocles <laughs> and just had a parade down fucking Young Street and oh my God. you know with a, that would have been hilarious with you at the front with like a baton yeah with like Ricky Martin's greatest hits playing on like a giant fucking speaker <laughs> and that would be more ridiculous than a fucking car bed like I'm just saying she bangs she bangs oh <laughs> well we all bang and we'd all just walk with the crabs and it would just be amazing but I wouldn't crab walk but I would be leading the parade I wouldn't say it'd be an orderly parade but the fucking ridiculous is what it would be. It would be ridiculous. I mean, if you like crab, it's also a delicious parade. <laughs> yes. I'll make sure it's a very hot and steamy day. Kill kill two birds with one stone there. <laughs> uh, parade and dinner at the same time. You have to wear your little lobster bib. It's parade and dinner. All right, guys. I'm going to say Matt won this one. So, Matt, you get your, uh, you know little outro right now my vengeance i get my last say of this episode because i win yeah go and claim your your win all right uh first of all i just want to say that wearing a a lobster bib to a crab parade is racist against the crabs (laughs) so i'm not even going to justify that i don't even want any of my crab friends to ever hear that kind of nasty speak uh i will accept this win because it is a justified and well-balanced win uh, I will look forward to judging you all uh, at the next episode, which I don't know when that'll be, but I do have the idea of what it'll, what, uh, what the question will be, what the hypothetical will be, but you best damn believe I will absolutely surgically dissect everything that you say and then give the win to Peter anyways. That's pretty much my, <laughs> that is what this is going to be about. But that's how mad you are, Mr. Oh I. <laughs> boy, this one boils on forever. This one is going to last a little while. It's a deep burn. On this episode of Hypotheticals, it is me, Matt, doing the outro because Justin just cannot, cannot deal with defeat, but I won with a more ridiculous, frivolous spending of money than just buying a stupid bed and some fondue set you can get at Bed Bath & Beyond. Nonetheless, if you like the podcast, go ahead and follow us on any of the podcast networks that you prefer. Leave us a comment, a review, subscribe, do all that jazz on behalf of myself, Peter and Justin. Thank you for listening.